welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for keeping it locked. September is, if you didn't know it, National Oral Health Month. And this gives us a chance to take a closer look at our daily dental routine, understanding the importance of practicing and maintaining a healthy mouth, teeth, gums, the whole system. And it really can help us improve our smile inside and out. And don't forget that um, your confidence and uh, I think your general state of mind really does uh, stem from this. So we are so pleased to have a founder and principal dentist at OptiSmile Advanced Dentistry and Implant Center in Cape Town, Dr. Clifford Udelman, joining us to answer some of our burning questions this morning. Uh, Doc, great to have you here. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us. Happy Spring Day um, and happy uh, National Oral Health Month. Um, I, uh, uh, these, these opportunities to, to cast light on, on something that is so important to us and should be a part of our daily routine is something that we, we really don't miss on the show. Let's, let's start with one of the burning questions that certainly come through on our social media platforms. What can we do about sensitive teeth and in particular bleeding gums? Okay, well, sensitive teeth is very, very common. I often see people complain of sensitive teeth when they've been drinking hot water with lemon in the mm -hmm. morning. I know it's supposed to have health benefits, but if you breathe in and all of your teeth are sensitive, then it's a sign that maybe you've got too much acid in your diet. Diet cold drinks can cause a lot of sensitivity or in fact, any kind of sparkling water. Okay. So yeah, when you're gonna drink water, drink still water or tap water is better. If you have sensitivity on, on a particular tooth and it's not generalized sensitivity, then you should definitely see your dentist get it checked as out. As possible. <laughs> Some people have sensitivity on biting. So if you get pain on biting, you could have a cracked tooth or sometimes you just need the bite adjusted. So this whole thing about sensitivity, I wouldn't um, just let it go. And gum, gum problems, is that what you asked about? Yeah, for bleeding gums. Yeah, so bleeding gums, the most common, one of the most common diseases after the common cold is gingivitis and periodontitis. Don't ignore bleeding gums. It means that you need to floss every single day and not just birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> so uh, if you have bleeding gums, make sure you brush along the gum line with a, a nice soft toothbrush and change it often and see your dentist uh, and oral hygienist every six to 12 months, depending on your particular situation. But bleeding gums is not normal. You shouldn't have any bleeding anywhere, you know, particularly from your gums. Um, flossing, why is flossing so important? So flossing gets between the teeth. When you brush your teeth, you only brush the outside and the tongue side and the top but there's, there's two more sides and that's in between the teeth and that is where most cavities and gum disease start. If you don't floss between your teeth, at some point you probably will get cavities between your teeth and if you're not cavity prone, you will get gingivitis and possibly gum disease as well. You mentioned gingivitis obviously and periodontitis, what's the difference? So gingivitis is, is uh, reversible, you just have to brush better, get a cleaning, make sure that you're healthy. So if your gums are bleeding, if you're stressed, you're not sleeping well, you don't have a good diet, your gums can go through periods of where, where they will bleed. Also during pregnancy, you can get bleeding in the gums, mm. but it's reversible. Whereas periodontitis is when the bacteria get below the gum and they start eating away at the bone. Often you can smell someone's breath is really bad when they've got periodontitis. But particularly in smokers, their gums can look firm and pink and healthy. And when we use a periodontal probe, which is like a little dipstick to measure around the gums, in a few places it just sinks in five, six, seven millimeters. And it sounds a bit gross this time of the morning, but pus yeah. can come out of your gums. So. Well, no, but it's stuff that we need to deal with. And it's, mm. you know, it can often start out innocuously, but um, you know, the, the repercussions can be, can be really, really bad for you. Um, doctor, thank you so much. Um, uh, Dr. Udelman's gonna stick around. We're gonna answer more questions. I've got a ton of them relating to our oral health and hopefully these are ticking some of your boxes as well and we are talking about oral health this morning being oral health awareness month it's my feel good 
Welcome back as we continue our discussion about oral health being National Oral Health Month. And Dr. Udelman will continue the conversation now on screen. I know we've covered a plethora of topics in a very short amount of time, but thank you so much for your, your insights this morning. I'm going to start with one that I think maybe a lot of people want to know more about teeth whitening. Let's start with the teeth whitening process itself. How long does it or should it last? How long will your teeth stay white after a process? Is it permanent or does it kind of wear off? So firstly, I think we should talk about professional teeth whitening that's done at a dentist. In South Africa, unless you go to a dentist, you cannot get the proper teeth whitening that has hydrogen peroxide in it. So if you go to a beauty salon or somewhere where they use aloe or something that will make your teeth look white, within a few days, your teeth may go back to their previous color. And then there's teeth whitening toothpaste, which are okay for removing stains, but professional teeth whitening involves putting peroxide on your teeth and protecting the gums so that the gums are not um, burnt in that process. Whenever you do teeth whitening, you should always have um, take home trays and then every few weeks you will carry on with the teeth whitening and then eventually just once a month you touch up and it will last you for the rest of your life if it's done properly okay. but if you just do an in chair and you don't do any touch-ups at home it will slowly go back to to not as as yellow or as brown as it was before but it but will, there go will be back. degradation yeah. so uh, you know the watch would have just invest properly at the beginning and do do it properly so are, are you are you saying that tooth whitening toothpastes pretty much don't work well, in, in other countries, you may get toothpaste with a little bit of peroxide in it, and they, they will actually maybe whiten the teeth slightly. But most of those like toothpaste are for removing coffee and tea stains on the surface of the teeth. But to whiten the teeth from the inside, you do need professional teeth whitening. And also, you want to handle that process with care, I would imagine, as well. How often should someone be seeing their dentist? So it depends on the actual person. So most people should be getting a professional cleaning every six months and seeing the dentist once a year. There are patients that I see that have fantastic teeth and I say, you know, you come back in 12 months for a cleaning and we only need to see you in 24 months. And there's other people, they come in every six months and there's always problems. Those people usually are drinking very, you know, fizzy drinks with lots of sugar acid. and acid and they're not flossing, not brushing, and they've, they've got the bacteria in their mouth that have caused cavities before, and now they get, they get a lot more cavities. And the same with gum disease. If people don't get on top of it, they, they really, it gets worse and worse. Um, I know there's obviously, yes, some genetic predisposition, but I'm, I'm picking up that so much of this is, it really is in our hands. This is something that you can be in control of and it, it falls down to a daily routine. What advice do you have based on your many years of experience in your, your dentistry? What, what advice do you want to leave with us? So I think for anybody, whether your teeth are great or uh, you think they're great or you've got really bad teeth, you should always start with a very thorough exam. Find a dentist that you trust, ask your friends, read reviews, go, go online, um, do your research. And when you see that dentist, make sure that they, that they spend, like for us, for a new patient exam, we spend an hour and I do a no charge video consultation before patients come in to answer questions. Wow. That can be as long as half an hour before. So before we even look in your mouth, you could have already, you know, had, you know, at least almost an hour of, of, um, of consult. examination, wow. consultation. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, which I know is very valuable. If, you, if you'd like to find Dr. Udelman, just go and Google the best dentist in Cape Town. I have a feeling his name will pop up. Um, thank you so much for, for taking this time out and for, for uh, proudly supporting your industry as well during National Oral Health Month. Um, just a few tips on how we can take better care of our own oral health, something that's going to put you in good stead for the rest of your life. So make those adjustments now.